Good afternoon. It is a great pleasure to be back in beautiful Nepal. The Prime Minister and I have just had a very productive meeting and I thank him for his wonderful hospitality. Indeed, the warm welcome I received in Nepal is something I will never forget. We are living in difficult and tense times. I know that even though the conflict in the Middle East is thousands of miles away, it has it very close to home for the people of Nepal. I extend my deepest condolences to the families of the 10 Nepalese students killed in the terror attacks by Hamas in Israel on 7 October. And my best wishes for the safe return of Mr. Bipin Joshi, who is missing. I have just arrived here from Qatar, and I will continue to insist on the immediate and unconditional release of all the hostages in Gaza. And I repeat my utter condemnation of the appalling attacks perpetrated by Hamas. There is no justification ever for the killing, injuring, and abduction of civilians. The situation in Gaza is growing more desperate by the hour. I regret that instead of a critically needed humanitarian pause supported by the international community, Israel has intensified its military operations. The number of civilians who have been killed and injured is totally unacceptable. All parties must respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. That law emerged from the tragedy and awful experiences of war. I've always been consistent in my call for strict compliance of the well-established principles and the rule of international humanitarian law. The protection of civilians is paramount. The laws of war establish clear rules to protect human life and respect humanitarian concerns. Those laws cannot be contorted for the sake of expedience. The world is witnessing a humanitarian catastrophe taking place before our eyes. More than two million people with nowhere safe to go are being denied the essentials for life, food, water, shelter, and medical care, while being subjected to relentless bombardment. I urge all those with responsibility to step back from the brink. And I reiterate my appeal for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, the unconditional release of all hostages, and the delivery of a sustained humanitarian relief at a scale that meets the needs of the people of Gaza. We must join forces to end this nightmare for the people of Gaza, Israel, and all those affected around the world, including here in Nepal. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here in Kathmandu, to strengthen the deep friendship and cooperation between Nepal and the United Nations. Nepal has a long and proud tradition of championing peace and multilateralism. And the United Nations is usually grateful to Nepal for your support for multilateral so solutions, backed up by the enormous contribution you make to peacekeeping missions around the world. Nepal progress over the past 20 years has been astonishing. You have become a republic, established peace, and thrown yourselves behind the Sustainable Development Goals and climate action. And there is more to come. The next few years will be decisive as Nepal prepares to graduate from least developed country status and as it embarks on the final stages of the peace process with transitional justice. Transitional justice must help to bring peace to victims, families, and communities. And the United Nations stands ready to support Nepal to develop a process that meets international standards, the Supreme Court's rulings, and the needs of victims, and to put it into practice. Nepal is also caught in a blizzard of global crises not of its making. The aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, inflation, caused by the international economic situation and the enormous threat posed by climate chaos. Much more international action is needed. Developed countries must step up to support sustainable development 
and help developing economies, including Nepal, to tackle the climate crisis. On this trip, I will visit the Himalayas to see for myself the terrible impact of the climate crisis on the glaciers. The situation is dire and it is accelerating. Nepal has lost close to a third of its size in just over 30 years, mm -hmm. and glaciers are melting at record rates. The impact on communities is devastating, and I will meet local people in the Himalayas to hear directly from them about how they are affected. I will travel to Pokhara and to Lumbini to reflect on the Lord Buddha's teachings of peace and non-violence, which are more relevant than ever in our deeply troubled world. And I want to explore how the United Nations and Nepal can work together even more to solve problems, boost prospects and improve international support. Because Nepal is a friend of the world, and so the world must be a better friend to Nepal. Working together, we can make that a reality, and I thank you.